Hey guys, we're back. Uh, it's been about two weeks. Uh, Unger the Radar is now back better than ever. I'm your host, Randy Unger, and I just want to thank everyone uh, who participated in the Kulanu Fair uh, in Cedarhurst last Sunday. I was there with my fellow Ghostbusters, and we had a really great time. So, having said that, let's go straight to the show. I want to welcome a uh, friend, internet radio host, and associate producer of a new documentary, 350 Days. That's a mouthful. Yeah, Mr. Evan Ginsberg. How are you, Randy? Good, good to see you. Good. Good it's to nice see you. to see you. Thank you. I know you have your show right before mine. That's right. So the tables have kind of turned a little bit. They're a little flipped right That's now. Right. That's <laughs> right. How, did, how does it feel being on the other side? Um, we've been doing a lot of interviews on yeah. behalf of the movie, so I'm pretty comfortable. I'm more used to doing the interviews, <laughs> but whatever works. Yeah, that's great. So um, I know you've promoted the hell out of this thing already. You've talked about it um, for a long time, I'm sure. A few like months now, or yeah, yeah, well. um, tell my audience a little bit about 350 Days. Sure. 350 Days is about professional wrestlers of the 1980s and 70s, uh, legends like Bret Hart, Superstar Billy Graham, Tito Santana, Greg Valentine, guys who wrestled around the world, headlining arenas. They were literally on the road 350 days a year, and the toll that took on their families, their bodies, their psyche their relationships with their children. How do you tell your kid, I can't be home for Christmas, I won't be home for Thanksgiving, I can't make your graduation, I can't see your football game uh, this weekend, etc., so on, and um, the sacrifices that they made, and that's basically what the film is about. So it's not just about wrestling, it's about no. the, the personal lives of these athletes exactly. and what they go through. Our editor, Michael Burlingame, he worked with Paul McCartney, Mariah Carey, Sting, HBO, Showtime, Emmy Award nominated. He's not a wrestling person. Mm -hmm. So what we said to him was, make a movie your 80-year-old grandmother who hates wrestling or <laughs> never has watched wrestling would cry. Right. So a compa <laughs> something comparable would be The Wrestler. I was associate producer on The Wrestler. Right. And you didn't have to be a wrestling fan to appreciate Mickey's performance. To appreciate the dysfunctional family, mm -hmm. a quality film. Did all Rocky. You don't have to be a boxing fan to appreciate Rocky. Right, right. So, this film, you know, if you have a wrestling fan in your life, great. If not, I think you'll enjoy it regardless. That's great. So, tell me, how did you get involved? First of all, how did you get involved with 2008's The Wrestler? <laughs> Um, I was an agent for these legendary wrestlers, uh, the late Johnny Valiant, Nikolai Volkov, and we were sitting in a wrestling store doing an autograph signing, and the executive producer's best friend just started chatting with us, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, I'd like you guys to meet with Darren Aronofsky. I think you'd be perfect for this project we're working on, mm -hmm. and we met, and we hit it off, and they were picking our brains about wrestling, being on the road, the trials, the tribulations. Hmm. And uh, to make a long story short, I was offered the, um, I was, I became an associate producer, which basically I was the wrestling guy. I like brought, a consultant? I, yeah, I yeah. brought in Mickey's stunt double. Stunt double. I brought in the ring. I, I did five casting calls with wrestlers. Uh, anything wrestling related, hmm. you know, was on me. Because they wanted authenticity, and um, I had been involved with professional wrestling for decades, and I had the contact, the contacts, that brutal hardcore wrestling scene, Necro Butcher. I brought him in, and um, etc. So on. And then flash forward ten years later, you're doing another wrestling film. How did you get involved with 350 Days? Well, along the way, I had been offered various wrestling projects. I always said no because. I just felt you're not going to touch the wrestler. Uh -huh. But this <laughs> film, 350 Days, um, it's heartfelt. Mm -hmm. And once again, the editor is not a wrestling guy. Even the director is not a quote unquote wrestling guy. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make a quality, heartfelt, moving film. For example, um, I love documentaries. Mm -hmm. I'm a New York kid from Brooklyn. I've watched documentaries on coal miners. <laughs> I have no knowledge, no real right. interest. But if it's done well, it's right. going to move you. Huh. And that's the whole point of doing a quality documentary. It's not just for that uh, niche audience. Yeah. yeah, it has to entertain and educate. That's I Exactly, think, and, and move people. Yeah. You know, any movie, you're, you're a film critic. Um, Cisco and Ebert used to say, how do you judge a movie? Mm -hmm. You can't walk out. 
you need to know what's yeah. going to happen with these people. How does this end? You need if a you lasting could, impression. Yeah, if you could, if you could hit the stop button on the remote or walk out of a theater, this is not a good movie. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, so, yeah, sure, sure. So that we just said we're going to make a movie that's going to touch people. One of the wrestlers had a life-saving transplant mm -hmm. from a 17-year-old girl who died, and it's very powerful, very powerful. And it, it's not just wrestling. What was it like assembling all this footage? What was the research process like? <laughs> 120 plus hours of footage, <laughs> edited down to under two hours, and one of the reasons it took five years. Uh -huh. The wrestler took seven years from start to finish. Wow. People really don't know the wrestler we shot in seven weeks, five day shoots, wow. 35 days, <laughs> but it took seven years from start to finish. Five or six rewrites of the script, right. uh, ultimately, you know, raising the money. Th you know, this is a major part of, of, you know, doing films today. Where is the money coming from? <laughs> films are not easy. Anybody who thinks, you know, you snap your fingers, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, you really have to be passionate about a project really be devoted to it right. and understand that most likely you're not going to get rich from it right so yeah. you got to be truly passionate that's for exactly sure. now you were probably very young when you got into wrestling like what 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 is it about wrestling that fascinates you so wrestling is the proletarian performance art theater for the people <laughs> very simple good versus bad right and these guys are in incredibly charismatic colorful great athletes, great actors, you're acting in there, you know, you're telling a story. A wrestling match is really a 10, 15 minute play <laughs> where, you know, there's a story, this guy's, you know, uh, doing something villainous, the other guy overcomes evil. I mean, it's simplistic many times, but it, you know, it, it works on its own level. So you're saying it's more, um, more entertainment than sport? It's sports entertainment, technically. Mm -hmm. They're athletes. Uh, you know, they hate the word fake. Gravity is not fake. When you're <laughs> jumping off the rope right. and, a, you know, a 300-pound guy lands on you, it hurts. And, you know, the, um, the hip replacements, the bad backs, oh, the uh, knee replacements, these are not fake. Right. The divorces are not fake. The kid who's not talking to you substance anymore. Abuse. The yeah. substance <laughs> abuse in many cases, right. not all. Right. You know, none of this is fake. So right. it's, um, it's an art in its own right. Some people, my mother loved wrestling. My grandfather loved wrestling. Oh. And other people will say to me, what's an intelligent fellow like you doing involved with wrestling? <laughs> it's stupid. So, you know, I, I could see both sides of it. It, very similar to um, superhero movies. Right. Some people appreciate the art of it. Right. To me, Dark Knight Rises is an excellent film. Yes. Other people will go, it's a guy in a cape. This is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, it, it's right. It's a guy in a ring with with spandex. The same. Yeah. Principle. So, <laughs> you know, not everybody gets it. Right. It's, yeah. Um, what was it like assembling all these wrestlers for the for the film? It, it was almost like therapy sessions. <laughs> no, really. You're, um, you, you're asking guys to spill their guts, and they have to trust you like a therapist. You know, it's very hard to tell somebody, my kid doesn't talk to me anymore. My, uh, I, I cheated on my wife from day one on the road. I wasn't a good husband. Uh, you know, to get them to open up like that is very powerful. Wow. Um, curious. There's two questions here. What are your thoughts on wrestlers becoming politicians? And then again, what are your thoughts on wrestlers becoming actors? <laughs> um, Roddy Piper mm -hmm. was a legitimate, charismatic actor. John Cena, I think, has charisma right. and talent. He's very funny. The Rock is great at what he does. I don't know if he could do Macbeth, you know, <laughs> but. Give uh, it some time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, they have. Johnny Valiant, who was on The Sopranos and was also a legendary wrestler and yeah. a dear friend of mine, he. Um, he would say the wrestlers have far more natural charisma than the typical actor. Mm -hmm. So right there, you have a good starting point. Right. And like I said, in the ring you're acting, you're telling a story. So I could, I could see the transition in many cases. I mm -hmm. mean, in, in certain respects, they could be over the top. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to get subtle out of a lot of these yeah. guys. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you can't expect Anthony Hopkins, uh, you know... Uh, <laughs> Liam Neeson, yeah. but you know they could pull it off. They do their best. Absolutely, it's <laughs> great. Do you have a favorite wrestler and why? Um, 
the late Bruno Sammartino was right. a childhood hero. Um, superstar Billy Graham, who was in 350 Days. Nice. Unbelievable charisma. Um, the Valiant Brothers, uh, who became personal friends. Uh, you know, there are many favorites. Terry Funk. Right. And we've got about, what, 40 wrestlers in this? No. Yeah, about 38 wrestlers, yeah. 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 That's crazy. Yeah, so the editing is tight. Yeah. You see, your, your film show, the uh, a movie is made in the editing room. Yeah. This is what people... When you have 120 hours and you turn it into a quality less than two hours, you have to know what you're doing. All right. Well, speaking to that, um, what were some other challenges you guys faced during this uh, film? The challenge is always, you know, financial. Mm -hmm. You know, you, how are you paying for all this? It's, um, you know, to fly to Canada with a film crew to shoot these guys, to fly mm -hmm. somewhere else to shoot th those guys. It all costs money, and you know, there's three meals a day. And people have to understand that you're taking a risk with a movie. You're taking a risk, and uh, that's why an in, this is a truly independent film, and we hope people will support it. And even if you're not a wrestling fan, come out. And if you aren't interested, tell a wrestling fan in your life to come out because uh, it's five years of passion and hard work. And, yeah. yeah. How did you. Um how did you connect with the other producers and the director? They contacted they me. Contacted they, they knew me they knew you. through The Wrestler. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. The Wrestler um, was pretty well known, obviously. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, are there any other subjects out there that you want to tackle in a documentary? Yes, yes. Um, ageism in the music industry. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I've been working on something off and on and going to get back to it. Um, I have these. Jim Savali from Village Connection Radio, he'll tell you I bring in these great musicians and they're yeah. not kids. And in the music industry, I have pitched, listen to this, mm -hmm. I have pitched 16 year olds, beautiful, talented artists to record labels and they go, they're too old. We're looking for a 14 year old. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. That's literally what they said. Yeah, 16 is old. So what, what if you're 26, 36, 46, and you have all the talent and charisma in the world, but there's nowhere to go with it. Oh so there's ageism. You always hear about racism. How about ageism? And I think that's going to be my next project. Okay. Do you have um, a title in mind? Um, like the, the Age of Innocence? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, we were thinking the stage is an altar because the stage is a sacred place. Hmm. Whether that'll be the final title, I, I don't mm. know. You talk to any musician when they're on stage, mm. it's sacred to them. Mm. Even radio, right what, now, what, yeah. what you're doing, you believe in this. Yeah. You're, you're passionate about it. This is a sacred space where you're going to do your absolute best to do the best show possible, and things happen. You could have tech issues, you could have late guests, yeah. you could not feel well, but you know, it's, it's a sacred space. It really is. Yeah. Space. Absolutely. I totally agree with that Batman car. <laughs> yeah, yeah the back, that Batman car is like, like an altar. Uh, it's holy ground that's right, right. That's right. Now, Evan, we've, I know we've, we've had many conversations, many uh, movie conversations. Um, I'm curious, what are some of your favorite movies of all time? Of all time? Yeah, I ask everybody. Um, the Harder They Come with Jimmy Cliff. Mm. Um, before Sunrise. Okay. Before oh, yeah, Sunrise. Yeah. The trilogy. Uh, the trilogy. Yeah. Before yeah. Midnight, Before Sunrise. Nice. Beautiful films. Beautiful films. Um, once. Mm. I Once, about street musicians in okay. Europe. What a beautiful, moving film. Mm. Um, West Side Story. Oh, yeah. You're mm. never going to top West Side Story. Right, uh, right. You know, I, I mean, if you want to take it to the pop culture psychotronic <laughs> level we do all yeah nice. um <laughs> you know i grew up on bruce lee okay. i mean obviously it's not great art but what he did was unbelievable yeah. enter the dragon return of the dragon mm. i loved hammer horror oh, horror yeah. dracula christopher lee sure. you know uh franken the frankenstein uh, films price. with peter cushing yeah. peter cushing oh, Peter yeah yeah he's great he was great yeah, vincent price did great stuff also yeah. um you know the pop culture stuff i love also I grew up on American international films, mm -hmm. you know, black exploitation, Black Caesar, Hell Up in Harlem, Foxy Brown. 
I, I grew up on spaghetti westerns, nice, nice. Uh, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, Once or Upon Sergio a Sergio Leone. Yeah, Sergio Leone right. was a genius. Of course. Um, yeah, so um, if you're just saying favorite, favorite, yeah. you know, if you say what's the best movie of all time, you just go <laughs> Citizen Kane. Right, right. Godfather, you know, but, yeah. Yeah, Godfather, Citizen Kane. I think One, um, one Foot with the Cuckoo's Nest is pretty great, high up there. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and I know you've acted too. You've dabbled. Yes. Um, tell everybody about your, your acting career. <laughs> I had the most surreal experience a quote-unquote actor will ever have. I was on the set of The Wrestler, and um, <laughs> Darren Aronofsky gets the smirk, and he goes, Evan, come here. And I go, okay. Next thing I know, he goes, it was a very depressing autograph scene mm. in The Wrestler goes, work the room, walk up to Mickey last, ask him for an autograph and a Polaroid. Okay. I go, okay. Mickey whispers in my ear. He goes, just improv it. <laughs> so it's not in the script. Darren just got an idea. So I walk up to Mickey and I go, I loved you as a kid. I saw you at the garden. Can I have your autograph? And he goes, what's your name? And I think for a second, I go, Evan. And it, <laughs> it dawns on me how surreal this is. I'm playing myself in a fictional movie. That's cool. Absolutely surreal. Are you credited on IMDb as Evan? Uh, I believe so. <laughs> I, I, it's, it was 10 years ago. I, I I'm going to check that in a minute. Yeah. I, well, I, I, I'm an associate producer on it, so yeah, I'm certainly okay. credited there. <laughs> I might be credited as a fan. I'm not sure. That's good. But it, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, and and you, were, you worked on a horror film fairly recently, right? Yeah, um, yes, for uh, Warhammer Cinema. Um, yeah, we've, we've done various independent films over the years. I, I dabble in acting. I'm yeah. more on the production. Lorelei Runes, it's called. You prefer, you prefer being on the other side of the camera, not in front. Well, if somebody says, uh, I have a million-dollar role for you, I'll take it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not Same a, here? Yeah, I'm not really... <laughs> we'll split it. I don't pursue <laughs> the acting as much as the producing. Okay. But... Uh, you know, at my age, I'm not going to be the next teen idol. <laughs> you never you know. know. Never know. Yeah, it could be a good sci-fi movie idea right there. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I have I have some great ideas for scripts, but um, don't yeah, if you don't yeah, want to I don't want I don't want to divulge yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, it's another thing that people don't realize. Even with the wrestler, as great a script as that was, five or six rewrites. Wow. You, know? yeah. you have to really believe in this stuff. Yeah. Um, um, so I understand that the premiere of 350 Days is coming up. Uh, yes. Um, I know you've said this a million times already, but that's a, no, just I appreciate us. you plugging yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, July 12th, nationwide. Um, if you go to Fathom Events slash 350 Days or just FathomEvents.com, you can buy tickets nationwide. And also we're at the uh, Regal Union Square on uh, um, 14th Street, right around the corner yeah. from the Legendary Strand. Right. And we're having a big premiere with autographs and a Q and A. And I'm on screen for uh, a good 20 minutes after the movie, interviewing J.J. Dillon, one of the legendary oh, wrestlers. Yeah. This is a Fathom event, so it's not just the movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have a premiere at the legendary Chinese Theater in Hollywood right. the same night. And coast um, to coast, coast to coast, and 400 theaters, 400 or so theaters nationwide, oh. every major city. It's called 350 Days. Nice. And, uh, Appreciate your support. Yeah, of course, of course. Are you doing the Q and A in New York? I'm hosting the Q and A. Oh, awesome. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. cool. So come down to the Regal uh, at Union Square. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be five to ten p.m. Mm -hmm. on July twelfth. It's a long and premiere. It's, <laughs> it's a long event there. Well, this, first the autographs and oh, then okay. everything else. That's good. The uh, Q and A is going to be at the end okay. of the night, more like nine thirty. Now, are there any other uh, projects that you can talk about that might you might be working on now or? Um, your friends uh, Zayn and Bali. Oh and yeah, yeah. Vinny, and Vinny, uh, they uh, they have a horror project that they want me to be involved in. Oh and, great! Uh, that's gonna that's gonna come up. And as uh, a producer or as a on the on the producer end, I'm not sure okay. which title yet. We're still working out all the details. Oh cool. Okay. Independent horror, which is always fun. Yeah. Always fun. Yeah. Well, um, Evan, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you. And I want just want to tell you here and now that you're. A, a true inspiration and oh, you are you. a large reason why I'm doing this show right now. Oh, I appreciate it. You, you used to be a critic on my old show. Right, at that, Madhouse TV. Madhouse TV. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Many yeah. moons ago. Yeah, that was a, that, yeah, that was a few years ago that already. Was two or three? Two years. Yeah. I was there two years ago. You were there longer. Yeah. 
But um, that was fun, but this is better, and there I think it's, it's just getting better and better. There you go. And I want to thank you for everything. And, and who you have coming up today after me? Um, I'm going to be reviewing some movies with a filmmaker, uh, Sarah Martin. I believe she actually has a show here as well, right? No. She? Well, she is a co-host. Co-host, okay, yeah. So she's involved with uh, Village Connection awesome. as well. Awesome. So we're going to be reviewing some movies in a minute. Okay, well, thank you so much, Evan, Randy. Thank you so much. Appreciate the support. Yeah. Thanks. And I'll thank see you. you at the premiere, I think. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Evan. All right. And we'll be back in a few moments with our film review segment, uh, Everyone's a Critic. We'll be right back. coming back. Uh, so this is our film review segment, Everyone's a Critic, and I'm here with filmmaker Sarah Martin. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> nice to see you again, Sarah. I know it's been a while. You were here, what, a few months ago, uh, plugging film project with a gentleman. Yes. Um, how's that going? Oh, really good. Yeah. Really good. Um, I finished my feature film. Nice. And um, I'm working on a cooking show. Oh. We're actually filming tomorrow uh, with Herb Williams, <laughs> and uh, he is the NFL um, or NBA? Sorry, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Assist, oh, uh, uh, New York Knicks. Okay. I'm an idiot. The New York Knicks former assistant coach. And he cooks? No, he's actually going to be eating the food that's oh, cooked for him. Oh, We're nice. cooking his favorite meal, which is chicken Alfredo over wow. fettuccine. It's random. <laughs> yeah. It's a random. What's the name of the show? 
It's called Cooking with Johnny P. Okay. Chef Johnny P. Chef Johnny P. He's traded cool. in his cop hat for a chef's hat. Nice. I like it. He's yeah. in the promotional uh, material. Yeah, he was a manhunter forever. He was on the show Hunted, so he's, okay. he's done his own well, stuff. Well, first off, I just have a few like housekeeping items. Um, I saw two films, uh, screening links, one of which is called Shooting in Vain. I don't know if you've heard of it. No. It's kind of, a, it's just a very depressing drama about a young artist who decides to shoot heroin just because he's he's read about it, he's researched it, and he's just a little curious about the experience. Okay. Um, obviously very depressing, and yeah, I mean, if you're curious about the, you know, the acting chops of the star, I recommend it. Okay. But otherwise, it's just a very bleak film, and... Yeah, it's called Shooting in Vain. Nice, I like that name. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing a short film on an overdose, so I think that's awesome. Oh, cool. Yeah. Maybe you can connect with the filmmaker. Or yeah, that's really cool. Okay. Yeah. So that's Shooting in Vain, um, and the next up, I just saw this last night. It's uh, a French film called Mrs. Hyde. Mrs. Hyde. And it stars uh, Isabel Hoopert. Hooper. Okay. She's an acclaimed French actress, and basically, um, she plays a teacher who's despised by her high school students. She gets struck by lightning in a lab randomly, and she develops weird powers. Okay. And kind of, sort of gets revenge on the the students who mock her. Oh, nice. Nice. I love revenge. It's strange. It's in French, and if I mean, I do kind of recommend it. Wow. So, that's called Mrs. Hyde. Mrs. Hyde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Revenge. It's kind of like Silent Envy production. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. It should be the Revenge of Mrs. Hyde. That'd be a better title. Anyway, okay, and this is the final thing. Um, on June 7th, I actually went to the IFC Center for a very special event. Um, it was a screening of National Lampoon's Vacation. I don't know if, you're, if you've seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's classic. Yeah, 35 year old classic celebrating its anniversary. And there was a screening. There was a screening. Cool. And there was also a simultaneous book signing by the director's daughter. Oh, that's awesome. Harold Ramis, the late Harold Ramis. Yeah. His daughter was there, and she was promoting this book. Ghostbusters daughter uh, which that's I, cute yeah she signed copies of it and basically it's about her as a kid and having you know Harold Ramis as a dad that's really cool and it just gives you like an inside look on uh, in Harold, Harold Ramis' life oh I so, like that yeah. that gave me the chills yeah you know that's cute yeah so that was an awesome experience I'm not gonna lie I went dressed as a Ghostbuster nice I you would a, yeah so I am with the New York City Ghostbusters I've been to Comic Con oh there you go don't ask questions about my attire <laughs> oh really what did you uh Oh gosh! You're a cosplayer. Um, sometimes I dabble. Oh, cool. I actually made my own outfit, and uh, I was Dila from Star Trek, one of the original series. Okay, I just know the Next Generation. Yeah, a lot of people don't know it, but the super Trekkie fans were yeah. like all over me. And it was like a sexy outfit. It was like half my body was exposed. Wow. It was awesome. And what I made it. Dila. Yeah, Dila. Okay. Which... It took me a week to make. You can actually see it on my Facebook. Okay. It's, in, it's one of my cover photos. Nice. And you'll see me with all the Trekkies, and it's really, <laughs> it's a real dork fest. Is I she love like it. an alien or human? She's got. I don't want to ruin it oh. for you, but she's she's <laughs> she's awesome. You have okay. to see it. I don't want. You gotta see it. If you're a true Star Trek fan, <laughs> you gotta see it. Dila. All right. All right. That's cool. I'm not even kidding. All my true Trekkies, you know. <laughs> Are you, uh, stupid question, you're going to Comic-Con this year. I'm not. You're, you're not? Not this year, That's I can't. That's sarcasm? No, I'm not. I can't. I can't. Really? Make it. Yeah, I'm booked on those days. Oh, shoot. Where I know, going? and I was booked last year, so I was pretty bummed. Okay. You're, are you going? Um, I'm going to try. I, fan verification just uh, opened, so. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I might get verified anyway. I'm verified. Just in case. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, in case the event, you know, falls you out. You never know. You never know. That's Usually cool. I'll buy them anyway. <laughs> expensive though yeah i know okay and you can't I do scalp one day. them <laughs> no i know it's all right all right i buy them anyway i'm a waste of money <laughs> Are you a, so you're a big uh, con goer then kind of i've been to yeah. a bunch of cons i've been to a lot of cons here on long island like eternal con is that's good i think it's going this right weekend. now actually yep, right now. i was invited to i'm a lifetime guest lifetime so. guest lifetime guest oh. i just walk through the doors hello i'm here <laughs> <laughs> do you always have a different costume no no <laughs> no. You're always um. That was Dila? the that was the only year I dressed up. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Ever, otherwise, I dress like this, like Sarah Martin. <laughs> Sarah Martin. But I really wanted to make an outfit, so I did. I was yeah. like, let me do something that probably no one will have, and it's really hard to find people with those outfits. Okay. I think only a few cons had them. Just thought of um, they had Star Trek con. I think it's a, an annual thing. But I, yeah. I went like two years ago. It was pretty cool. I have a few friends that are major Trekkies, and they invite me every time. Nice. Yeah, to <laughs> everything. All their Trekkie outings, they have them all the time. They do Star Trek karaoke, which I'm yet to <laughs> go. I'm not even kidding. They're super like 
Do they Star Trek. S- do they sing songs specifically from Star Trek? Or I haven't it? been to one of those outings yet, but <laughs> okay. I, I imagine they might. That's cool. In unison. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Star Trek is pr- was pretty much when you first heard of, of Comic Cons and conventions, Star Trek was the first thing, the first property that you know inspired that. Sure, yeah, sure. So that's pretty cool. I think they started what like. 60s, 70s, probably. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's it, and it's gone everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere now. <laughs> like you can't avoid it. I love it. I love cons. Anyway. Me too. I think they're super fun, and it lets you, you know, kind of be something, someone else for the day, or be your mm-hmm. true self for the day. Maybe you know it's your alter ego. Interesting. Interesting. You know what I mean? Identity. What's real? What's not? No what's one can <laughs> say anything. You can just be like, I was cosplaying. But yeah. Really, it's it's really your superpower. You know. But I'm telling you though, New York Comic Con is so big, so crowded. It's like overwhelming. It is overwhelming. And I, you know what? I was overwhelmed the, the year I went. Yeah. The last year I went. Oh God. Yeah. It was, I think it was two years ago. And it's uh, just getting bigger and bigger. Like, it was really overwhelming that I was like, oh my God, I got, I need to breathe for a second. Even when you go to the outside area. Yeah. Packed. Yeah. It's too much. I prefer the mid the mid size to the smaller. There's one. Yeah. Um, I think it's in Philly called Retrocon. Oh yeah, I've heard of Retrocon. Yeah, it's very tiny. It's just like a I one, heard good things. Like a warehouse space. Yeah. Then there's Hartford Con in Connecticut, which is a little yes. bit bigger. I've been there. Great yep. size. Yeah. You know? I think that was in a hotel. Yep. So that was cool. Yeah, I like those hotel conventions. Yeah. I do Days of the Dead a lot. I actually traveled. I went to Indiana. And uh, where else was it? We think it was in Connecticut. Uh-huh. We went to a few places, and uh, it was awesome. And we were selling a movie, a B movie that I was in. Cool. I'm not gonna say the title of it, but you can look it up on my IMDb. <laughs> I don't like to promote certain things. Okay. But it's a great movie. It's funny. It's a B movie if you like B movies. Is it a is it a trauma film? It's a horror comedy. Nice. Yes, That's a trauma. I love that. Are you involved with trauma at all? No. I think you should. I think you. I think I might have mentioned that the last time. You, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's been it's been mentioned to me. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. That's awesome. I've been to their their office I went to Tromaville oh yeah in, uh, in Queens oh yeah. that's awesome yeah it was pretty cool it's actually at, at some guy's house I think Lloyd Kaufman wow but okay. you know it's pr- like independent as it gets yeah so I respect that that's, that's cool. awesome yeah so we've got two films to yes. watch uh, to watch to review hopefully yes. we watched them already we did and, we yeah. did want to get the um, the less interesting one actually this movie was kind of interesting Zendog Oh my god, I really liked Did it. Did you like it a lot? I really liked it a lot because of its cinematic points. It was yeah. done very nicely. It was. It, it was cool. The lighting was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, the story was interesting, but um, after a while, I kind of got the uh, concept. Uh-huh. You know, after the first few times. To- I don't. Can I give spoilers? Uh, I, I really I, loved <laughs> how it was done. I liked the story, and, and yeah. I was thinking the whole time how they filmed it. And it's got an eternal sunshine of the spotless mind kind of vibe to it. Like yeah. That whole reality versus dream. Like, basically, it's about a young guy, an entrepreneur, who wants to explore lucid dreaming. Right. When his uh, his goofy, nerdy friend comes to town and basically squats in his apartment, and he's intrigued by the concept of experiencing a dream and like walking through it and his full like and having control in your dream. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I thought it was was unique. Like, yeah. Um. I really I like how everything was done. I thought the cinematic qualities were good. When it went in and out, it all made sense. Yeah. Everything flowed really well. Um, but that middle part where I was like, oh, okay, yeah, he's going to still do it, obviously. His yeah. friend tells him no, and he's still going to do it. I don't want to give away spoilers. I don't know if this is for screening or... Well, yeah. I you saw it was two minor years. minor spoilers if you want. I know, I know it's been up on Vimeo for two years now. Uh, I, yes, I, I, yeah. I peeped the... Uh, <laughs> the time so I didn't know where it was going but it was great I thought it was filmed very nicely and yeah. I was trying to think of how they filmed it the lighting was immaculate the whole time there's some I, really interesting special effects too like visual yes, effects too yes and I, I wonder what the budget was for it I didn't yeah. I didn't actually look it up it further it didn't seem like a low budget movie no not at all but but it could have been yeah kind of because yeah, they had the, the apartment yeah they had um they had some scenes in some stores and I could tell in a couple of the stores that people were watching in the background not oh, as yeah. extras, but they were actually watching. <laughs> like, remember when they were in that, like, record, the music record store? Yeah, vaguely, yeah. I don't know if you remember, but I, I always just noticed the stuff, like, filming and stuff. Okay. But I noticed that the background people were kind of just watching. Mm-hmm. Okay. Instead Very of, observant. Uh, instead of being there. Like, yeah. as an extra. I don't know. <laughs> no, that makes total I'm weird. Sense. I watch movies differently now. <laughs> well, you're a filmmaker, so you have two different lenses. It was done really nicely. Yeah. I, I was really impressed. I wonder what they shot on. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. That's what I was... When I watch stuff, that's what I wonder. Yeah. You should reach out to them. I think you... I'm really impressed. I yeah. was very impressed. They're San Francisco, 
yeah. seemed to be the location. Mm-hmm. So good I, editing. Good, yeah, great yeah. editing. Yeah. Everything was nice. And the performances were memorable. The especially. framing was amazing. Yeah, yeah, the performances were great. I liked all the characters. Yeah. I liked the girl that he met in mm-hmm. his little... Yeah, I like the, the nerdy friend, actually. I like the nerdy friend, too. Yeah. But I couldn't, like, place him. I, I wasn't sure if he was supposed to be younger, but then I realized <laughs> on his close-ups that he's indeed older. But that, that like... Was it a wig or was that really his hair? Yeah, so he kind of looked like Elvis with yeah, like, yeah. like a nerdy but I did, Elvis. I liked him because he gave good advice in the end. At yeah. first, I was like, "Oh God, this yeah. guy!" But then he was like a good—he's a good friend. Yeah. But he did drug him, so he I don't did, know. Well, he didn't. Well, yeah, he he he. <laughs> he totally drugged him. That was promoted, totally not legal. He promoted this hallucinogenic tea. Yeah, it yeah. was totally not legal. On, you know. <laughs> but yeah, he, he had like sort of like a Seth Rogen type of vibe. About yes. Him. Definitely look the Seth, Seth Rogen type. Yeah. I have a lisp, my bad. The <laughs> Seth right. Rogen type. Yeah. I want to see more of him. Or no, even Jonah Hill, I'd say. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, a, like if, the, if like Jonah if Hill and together. Seth came together. If they had a love child. That's that their be. baby. Yes, yes. That's awesome. So that's, yeah. So, uh, final thoughts on Zen Dog? I thought it was really great. I, I like it. I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. Really? Yes. It's pretty good. I might give it a Six point five. I give it a seven point five based on the cinematic qualities alone yeah. and the lighting, yeah. and the, and the storyline was understandable. And uh, I wouldn't say it's a relatable movie, but <laughs> I think that it was a great, nicely shot movie, and I could see it winning awards. At, yeah, I could see that. You know, at festivals. It was. I mean, it was a little bit above average, I'd say. I Not, thought it was great. Yeah. Because I was thinking how I would film it, and I was like, wow, I'm really <laughs> impressed. Is that a type of movie you would make? No. <laughs> okay. But but uh, it was it was great. I okay. thought it was a great movie overall, and it you know it kept your interest. Mm-hmm. You know, at first I wasn't sure what I, I was getting into. I was like, oh god, I gotta watch the screener. I, hate I know. I read screeners. the synopsis. It seemed interesting. Yeah. It was. So. It was good. It yeah. it dragged a little where it was almost repetitive with that he kept making the tea, yeah. but because we knew that he was gonna. Yeah. Maybe if they kind of time lapsed it a little bit more, or maybe they just kept seeing him pour it. Which, oh, and I love those close-ups, by the way. So if they're mm. watching, love those close-ups. Mm. Who is your camera operator? I'm Kinda so Kind of like impressed. Edgar Wright in a way, right? Those. Yeah, very impressive yeah. Uh, little shots, I mm. want to say. And uh, mm. yeah, so I liked it. Good. So I'd say 7.5. 7.5. 5. I give it a 6.5. Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe a 7. Oh, okay. Maybe. Above um, average. I I'm love debating. It. I'm debating. I liked it. Yeah. I liked it, um, and I liked the characters. Cool. Good job. Good yeah, job yeah. of casting. You'll see this on Netflix randomly. It'll be there in a few weeks. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Probably. I, I bet. It yeah. seems like it could be a Netflix yeah, series. Yeah, right? Mo- to be honest, most of the movies I do... Re- Original. Re- yeah. Most of the movies I review on the show are like net- those late-night Netflixers that yeah. you can't find anything else, but... It was done really well. Good. Yeah. I really liked it. I gotta tell you. Yeah, good. I was impressed. I was All like, right. okay, good. <laughs> Having said that, shall we move on to our next film? Yes. <laughs> Incredibles 2. Incredibles 2! It just came out. It's amazing. I mean, I like the first one a, a little bit more. Yes, I li- oh, I like the second one better. Really? Okay, yeah. this should be interesting. Then. <laughs> oh, I, it's okay. I, I like them both, though. They're both really I sweet. love them both. They're great. You, Pixar really can't do wrong. They like, don't. They yeah. never, I love them. I love yeah. Monsters, Inc. Don't ask. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, but now, you know what? Monsters University, not so great. Didn't see it. Okay. I didn't want to be disappointed because I read the reviews. Yeah. I'm a review person. Yeah, right, yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> I tend to avoid reviews. I like to do, create my I'll own still first. watch it, but I, I always like to look at reviews. Check I wonder it out. if half of them are paid. Yeah. I would check Don't it out. Don't watch anyway. this movie. It sucks. <laughs> Just kidding. The, the first one, though, amazing. Monsters, Inc.? Yes. Oh, my God. My favorite. Yeah. I, think I, I didn't want to watch University because I was like, oh, this is silly. It is silly. I didn't like that idea. No. Are you a big Pixar? Uh, Love. Yeah? Love. I'm not a huge cartoon person, but it has to be Pixar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I haven't seen Coco yet. I need to see Coco. I haven't seen it either. Yeah. But I do like Pixar. Mm-hmm. They do a good job. So um, basically, Incredibles two, it picks up exactly where the first film left off. Right. And yeah, they they are trying to defeat the Underminer, and then I uh, won't give anything away. Almost did there. This film. I know. I'm I'm scared. I'm gonna give stuff away. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. It, it's kind of. I don't of, know how it, to review it. It just it. came out, so people are still seeing it. So, I know. You know. Don't watch this. I'm about to give away a spoiler. <laughs> no. If you haven't seen Incredible two. Are you gonna give one? Give away one or no? I really like the baby. That's okay. it. That's my spoiler. Okay. That's not a spoiler <laughs> that's, not, at all. that's in the trailers. It's yeah, fun. yeah, but it's so good. Yeah, it's, it's cute. so cute. Basically, this it's focusing on Elastigirl now. Helen yes. Parr. Yes. Played by uh, Holly Hunter, great voice actress. Yes, I and love the voice. Regular actress. Love she's the great. voice. Yes, yeah, so good. So basically, and now it flips it, and now she's in the spotlight fighting crime, and um, 
what's the guy? What's da, 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 Mr. Incredible? Poor is Mr. It, Incredible. Is it Bob Parr? I forget. I think it's Bob. I forget his name. That's terrible. But yeah. he, he refers to himself as Mr. Incredible anyway, right. the whole time. Mm-hmm. And now he's at home watching the kids. It's so funny seeing yeah. reversed roles. It's cute. It's, it, it but was But then smart. he... he he, oh, I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> is it a major spoiler? Because the baby, that, that wasn't, that's not a spoiler. No, this one, this time it would be a spoiler. Okay. Yeah. What did you think of I don't want to, what? <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. Amazing. Really Amazing. Yeah. Can I say it? I'm just kidding. I won't. No. I, you, Sorry. You're about to explode right now. I know. I All know. Right, guys, I can mute you. You can't let you can me review it. a movie that I can't review. All right, fine. <laughs> we got a spoiler coming. No, right. I, I'm no? not doing it. I'm not no? doing it. All right. I'm not doing it. Sorry. My friends would kill me. Yeah. See, I don't mind spoilers. That's <laughs> just me. But my friends hate it because I always... I'm like, do you want me to spoil it for you? Do you want I, me to spoil I can spoil it for you. Right I now. spoiled The Killer of Scream 3 with my best friend oh. in 2000. And I still hear about it from him. Oh, that's okay. He's still giving me shit for that. Ha. Why? Who's the killer? I'm not... I mean, Wait, who? Well, it's 18 years ago, so it's uh, Scott Foley. Oh, my God. I didn't watch it yet. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, but yeah, there's, we did spoilers for uh, Avengers, uh, but it would, had been in theaters for like a few weeks by then. Okay, and so. disclaimer, disclaimer. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Watch at your own risk. Exactly. I might accidentally slip. Yeah. All right. What do you think? So it's Pixar. The, oh, amazing. The animation. Nine, right? nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. I, I really a, loved it. I give it a ten for animation. I, I never give anything a ten. Okay, okay. I never get so nine is my ten, I guess. Why not? not why never a ten? Because nothing. Nothing is perfect. Is ever <laughs> amazing as a ten. <laughs> but this movie is incredible. So yeah. It is, it was it was it is yeah. t- two. I do think though they kind of like cram too much stuff in it. Like yes, it was it was a lot. But I really oh god, I don't want to give. I'm gonna spoil. I can't. I really love. You don't want your friends to hate you. We, <laughs> no. I knew that when the girl went into the violet. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I don't want to give anything away. Oh, I, I'm okay. just gonna say girl. Oh, no, sorry. not not the girl, girl. Okay, different girl. Okay, oh. Elasta girl. Elasta girl. Sorry. Okay. Just you can I spit can't it say out. it. It's this fine. is like the no. worst. I'm gonna spoil the whole freaking movie. Everybody, <laughs> cover your ears. I knew that it was too easy. That's uh-huh. all I'm gonna say. And I knew oh, that she okay. was coming back. I predicted the villain as well. Right, right, right. Yeah. I was like, come on. Me yeah. too, because I thought she was on drugs the whole time. Yeah, she did. Because uh, of her she, eyes. Yeah, she was a little like stonery. Now we just gave it away. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh well, she was. She was uh, like a stoner. Yeah. I totally. Well, now I, I want to like start spoiling. I know. Her. I didn't trust her the whole time. Yeah. I, something about her rubbed me the wrong way, and because it was too good to be true. Yeah. With the situation where they were presented. It was I a little know, convenient. Oh you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're the worst. Go out and see Incredibles too. Yeah, I guess the writing was a little bit lazy in that respect. Yes, because I was bummed, but it was Pixar, but it yeah. was because it was predictable that bummed me a little bit. Yeah. And that's why it doesn't get a ten. Okay. That's but the story flowed, and you knew what was going on, and you know what it is, you know, Pixar. So you know, kids have to be able to understand it as well. Yeah, and there were a lot of adult jokes too. Actually. Yes, there was, yeah. and uh, it was interesting. It was a very noisy theater. I haven't oh, been really? to a, like a Pixar movie theater, like a, a theater was it theater. Like all kids? <laughs> it was all like popcorn and like bags Oof. moving and like kids having to go to the bathroom and like parents <laughs> on their phones. It was very exciting. Where, where was it in Long Island? Yeah, I went to oh. a really ghetto theater. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be closing down soon. That's oh, how ghetto it is. Oh God! You could smell the Musk. <laughs> it's oh, great. Jesus. Did you do 3D, by the way? What? Did you do 3D? No, I didn't do 3D. Okay. It was Did That's how that? great the theater was. Okay. You well, know, I would have, though. I, I didn't want to waste the money. Cause, yeah, I would have. Yeah. My ticket only cost $5. That's how what? great this theater was. Wow. Yeah, so I was like, I can, <laughs> I can stand the smell for a good hour and 58 minutes. That is amazing. So, $5. That's $5. Great. I was like, okay, are you, are you guys closing today or i'm going to that theater soon for sure <laughs> yeah. before it closes i've actually tried to rent this theater out and they refused i'm like you guys look like you could actually use the money after going in today for like a premiere for your film yeah cool because i like the um the lobby is big and i i have a lot of people and i would like what to did they say they said oh that goes against our policy i'm like well that's bullshit i have a nice day weird. i find that weird I, that's like promotion for the theater though you would think and especially because the staff sucks. Nobody was in like the theater. I had to like knock, and then I had to find somebody. I could have just walked. If I knew what theater it was, I probably would have just honestly walked in. Or I was like, but I them. wanted to do the right thing. Yeah. And I was annoyed, so I was like, okay. I'm like, does anyone work here? <laughs> and then when I came down afterwards, they were like all sitting on the steps on their phones. Wow. 
Yeah, it was really great. It's a great theater. I think <laughs> that whoever's running it is doing a great job. Um, so who, who was guarding like the ticket booth? Like the nobody. The, you uh, could literally just walk. I could have just walked in, and if I had known it was upstairs, theater three, I would have helped myself. Wow, that's. I, really... I would say the name of it, but yeah, you... I want them to close. <laughs> Maybe I'll buy it. Yes. Yeah, and I'll just do theater. premieres for indie filmmakers. Uh, that sounds great. <laughs> it's literally in a great location too. Yeah. Do you go to the movies often, or? Lately, I have. I actually saw Solo. Oh, nice! And we I reviewed that a few uh, weeks ago. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it was, I, it was one of my favorite in recent time. I did not like the last Star Wars, so this one actually was thankfully a breath of fresh air. I liked it more than Last Jedi. I loved well. it so much yeah. more. Yes, it was just a fun adventure. And I love Amelia Clark. Mm hmm. She was good. But I think that, honestly, that role could have been done by any other pretty actress. Oh my god, I love her though. Yeah. Because I have a special place in my heart for Daenerys Stormborn. Oh, Because I love Game of Thrones. Oh, say that's a show I need to get. Oh on. my god. Everyone in the universe is watching it but me. <laughs> it's my favorite. I'm a real nerd. Yeah. Is it yeah. really good? It's really good. But I didn't like. All right. All, I was a diehard Game of Thrones fan since all the people didn't like it, and now they're all on board. I didn't <laughs> like the last season. Oh. Sue me. They got they got too into the. Um, what am I gonna say? It got so popular, it kind of lost yeah. its luster. Yeah, yeah. And I think they got sloppy, and then they were past the books. Mm -hmm. So that went against what Mr. Martin would have wanted. He was supposed to write one episode per season mm -hmm. as well, and uh, he wasn't done with the books yet. So I believe that it went surpassed his thoughts. So they had to get their writers involved, and it okay. got a little different, a lot different, I think. Are you into like that fantasy adventure sci-fi stuff? I am, mm -hmm. but I, at the same time, I'm not. I don't know how to explain that. I cool. love watching stuff like that, but I'm not like, oh my god, I have to go see it. Okay. You know, so and so you're not a diehard fan. You're just like a ca casual observer. Right. Okay. And but the thing is, I was a video gamer as a kid, and I played oh. a fa I played fantasy games where I had dungeons mm -hmm. and like dragons and stuff like, like that, but not uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I played a German game. It's called Tibia. If anyone wants to look it up, it's really lame. So Tibia, isn't that a bone in the human body? It is, it is. <laughs> it's actually one of the, the bigger bones, I believe. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. It's like an arm, I think. An arm bone? I don't know. A tibia, I think, is in your <laughs> we leg. Got into this. I think it's in your leg. Okay. No, there's a oh, I know there's a femur that's a, a thigh bone. No, oh, that's the biggest bone. That's actually. the largest. That's the biggest. A tibia, I think, is in your bottom. Little uh, biology lesson I suck. under the radar. I am not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> don't trust me at all with any of your doctor needs. All right. But, but uh, yeah, Solo was yeah the freaking best, and I, I saw it. Deadpool too. Yeah, Deadpool was good. Awesome. Uh, but again, with sequels, I like the first one more. I like the second one more. Really? Yeah, I really did. But I like both of them. Mm -hmm. I like the second one more because I like the love story aspect mm -hmm. of it. I'm a dork. I think the love, I love love. I think the love story. Um, between, I forget her name, Marekka Bachan. I'm butchering that name, but between her and Ryan Reynolds in the first movie, where they meet in the bar, she's a hooker. Yeah. I thought that was done. Extremely. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, it was awesome, really awesome. No, I love it. Love I love story. the story through and through. Yeah, I think it's awesome. I think now, I think I do a third one. You think? I don't know. I think there's like some issues with the studio or something. I don't know, but I know that a stunt person died in the making. Of the second one? Yes. Shit, I did not know that. This is a fun fact I found out. Who? Uh, <laughs> who's who's stunt person? Was it was it? a woman. I don't know her name. Mm. I'm really useless at this right now, but. But Someone did die in the making. Oh, God. I think it was very hush-hush. That's crazy. Man. Don't ask me where I get my sources from. I'll never tell. <laughs> that but it's true. That reminds me of... So there's two freak incidents that have happened in the history of film that I am aware of. Two yeah. big ones. Um, Twilight Zone, the movie, in 1983. Two child actors and uh, Vic Morrow, the star... the guy, He was in one of the segments. Right. They, a helicopter like, crashed on them Holy during filming. Moly. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a shame. Yeah. That's sad. And it was the Twilight Zone, so it's even more freaky. Yeah, that is. Um, and the director was like sued by the families with a whole legal issue. Right, John right. Landis, he did um, the Thriller music video. I'm sure they did not sign a waiver. Yeah. Just I, a release. I don't know. Just kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> not a time to make jokes. But <laughs> no. wow, that's really scary. Yeah, it's crazy. I always That worries me because actually filming Nefarious, one of my actors fell off the rocks and Oof. he broke his uh, collarbone. Jesus. And it took three months to recover. Luckily, it was perfect timing to film because we had a three-month break before filming, and it worked out perfect. But oh. yeah, it, that that stuff freaks me out. Yeah, this was your film too. This was my film. Oh, shoot. That's why I'm like, oh my god, I couldn't even imagine. I feel guilty about that to this day because, yeah. like, not that we weren't watching them, but they were like roughhousing on the rocks, these two boys, and okay. boys, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much their fault. He slipped. 
yeah, and yeah, yeah. it it was an accident. Nobody was paying attention. Not even his mom. Like we we ran over, you know, to it. So right. it was like really, it just broke my heart. Yeah. So I can never imagine somebody dying on my set. Like I'd be like, oh my god. Like I already had this kid broke two bones on my set. He broke his one of his toe bones too. But Jesus, you really can't do anything about that. So you know? some hardcore productions you have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the same movie and the same actor, Avery. Oh, really? And I used him in, in Menagerie also. He so. just has bad luck. <laughs> you know what? He's he's brilliant, a brilliant kid, but he just, yeah, he had some bad luck. Wow. And I, so I can never imagine someone actually dying. I would never forgive myself for letting yeah. that happen. Yeah, I can imagine. Ever. Also, um, Jason, was it Jason Lee or Brandon Lee? The son of Bruce Lee yeah. died oh. during making the Stunts? Crow. Uh, yeah, there was yeah. some issue with the bullets and the squib, and no, it yeah. like it it, oh, it exploded in the wrong way, and it like I don't know what the I oh never, my yeah. goodness, you you know about that yeah. yeah yeah oh like, my goodness that was back in like ninety three ninety four yeah, that's, crazy. that's yeah, horrible it's crazy it was a freak accident that was on the uh, filming of the crow right yeah the crow yeah good movie uh, that would make that would like break my heart forever yeah you know it's crazy. I mean I write movies where I kill people but I'd never want to like <laughs> actually, really actually kill someone on my set. <laughs> You know, because they wow. are real people and real actors, and it's so sad. That's sad. Yeah. Especially the kids. That's, It'd be that's very sad. realistic, though. If oh, you yeah. Kill well, we we would keep the cameras rolling. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. And then the next scene would be a funeral scene we'd have to edit. <laughs> oh, God. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> so dark. I got to make jokes. I'm a yeah. little morbid. That's fine. It comes from a good place. Yeah. I'm really an angel. <laughs> so, okay, Solo, um, Deadpool 2. What else have you seen lately? Gosh, what else did I see? I saw something else. What did I see? I don't even remember now. I saw something else. One of my friends dragged me out to. What? I don't remember. Avengers? Gosh, no. Oh, yes. I saw Avengers. Mm -hmm. Yes. We had a big uh, spoiler discussion here like a month ago. Oh, did you? Yeah, it was fun. It was good. Oh, my yeah. gosh. It was so good. Yeah, it was fun. It's, and everybody started making those memes with the, <laughs> you know, with the, their profile pictures. They had like a Facebook did a thing where you could like make your profile picture. You know how they do it for like the, the Pride events and stuff like that. <laughs> I didn't you, see that. As an Avenger? Yeah, the... Uh, the the dust thing. Oh right 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 the uh, the dying dust. Yes, <laughs> the dying dust. Yeah, I don't know how they're gonna bring those pe those characters back. I'm really fascinated to see. Yeah. Um, I really because I'm like oh my gosh it's like ah everyone. I know. Everyone. They gotta turn back time. Pretty much. Or, Pretty much everyone. Not everyone. I don't ruin it. Now were they in a different dimension? Because I think they. they I feel have like they're. To be. I feel like they're like being collected into like a little jar. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? How weird is that? That's cool. Because they're dust. I don't right. know. Like almost like ashes, like an urn. Or like an hourglass. Or yeah, maybe they're right. <gasps> like I love big, that. Ooh. A big hourglass. Yeah. And it's like crumbling down. I love yeah. that. Did you come up with that? I just yeah. came up with just that. Just now? Just now. That is fantastic. <laughs> an hourglass. Yeah. And time <laughs> is against them. Right. Or with you. Or so, you're right. So. They have <laughs> until all their particles. Yes. Oh my god, I love yes. that. There you go. That was really good. Thanks. <laughs> I'm writing it. It's copyrighted. Yeah, it's Don't take my idea. It. I'm just kidding. Damn, I'll get my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> um, That's really good. Thanks. So yeah, Incredibles two. What are you looking forward to now? There's always, there's always oh, something. Oh gosh. I saw all these posters in the movie theater lobby. There's some great movies coming out. Obviously, most of them are blockbusters. Right. Um, do you prefer a blockbuster to an indie or vice versa? Um, honestly, I don't have a either or, mm -hmm. either or. I as I like a good movie. I mm -hmm. like a good story. As long as it keeps my interest, the quality really isn't that important, yeah, to be honest. That's a good answer. Yeah, <laughs> I I want a good movie because think about it. You go back and you see some older movies, and they don't look as crisp and clear mm -hmm. as they you know that's as true. they do now. But you're gonna still you're gonna hate the movie. I don't think so. I love my cousin Vinny, and it's not filmed <laughs> on cameras that they use really anymore. You should remake that. I don't know. I think that would be cool. No, no. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> you can't remake it. It's <laughs> it's too good. It's classic, and it's one of my favorite movies in the whole entire world. Yeah. Would you say that's your number one? That's number one. Nice. My Cousin Vinny. All right. And I ask everybody this. I ask Evan this. Top five favorite movies. Oh, why don't we do five? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll give you the... I'll or give, ten. Or oh, three. You asked me this last time. <laughs> I'll give you three. So Maybe it's been revised time. since then. Okay. Um, I love My Cousin Vinny. <laughs> Nice. Obviously. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I can't think there's too many. Buick Skylock. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I really liked, okay, I'm a real Quentin Tarantino fan. Nice. Yes. And um, I actually got to go to the big premiere in New York City of The Hateful Eight. Oh. I thought that was really great. Nice. But I wouldn't say it's my favorite one. Um, I really like Natural Born Killers. That's, ooh. Okay. Did Tarantino write that? <sighs> mm. 
I, or was he involved in any way? Because it felt like he was. I thought so. Yeah, I think he might have rode. I thought so. Yeah, I know it was I Oliver Stone. I don't know though. Yeah. But that was a good one. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Favorite movies. Favorite movies. Yes, ah. yes. All right, I think I said this last time. It's really dorky and stupid, and everyone thinks I'm ridiculous. So. <laughs> um, I liked Biodome. Biodome. <laughs> Holly Shore. Holly Shore. <laughs> That's, no offense, one of the worst movies ever made. Yep, yep. I really liked it, and I'll tell you, it's the first DVD I ever owned. The first soundtrack? The first DVD I ever oh, owned. Oh, DVD. Okay. Yeah. First one ever. My first DVD was A Fish Called Wanda. Oh, really? Yeah, I love that movie. Wow. Yeah. A Fish Called Wanda. And then Terminator 2. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I really like Bur- Biodome. <laughs> worst movie ever known. Thank you. Yes. I liked it because it was stupid. Wait, That's wait what? Biodome? Yeah. So, for people who don't know... He, what is he, does he volunteer or is he thrown into the situation where we have scientists living in a, a dome? Oh, this is what happens. Uh, yes, please. Yes, Enlighten they, us. Yes, Biodome. they are driving down the road and the girlfriend's <laughs> super into the environment stuff and they just like broke up with their girlfriends or whatever because they got into a fight because it, he's not serious at all because he's a fucking loser. <laughs> and uh, they are driving down the road and the one guy has to go to the bathroom. So they think that the Biodome is a mall because they're that stupid. <laughs> and they go in and they get locked in with these scientists. Uh-huh. That's how. And... Since the right. scientists spent all this money and the doors have to be locked, I think, for like a year or something like that. They're living in there. Yeah, yeah, or whatever the time is. I think it's a year. I think it's a, more than that, maybe. Or it's a, whatever it was. It's I a year or so. Or, it, yeah. Something like that. Like I guess a year, let's just say. And uh, they get locked in and they spend so much money on the project that they can't afford, they won't, they refuse to open the doors and they said, we have to adapt to our environment. environment. And it's like a huge mess. I think it's just chaos. I think, I thought it was funny because... Huh. You know, here you got these serious scientists. And I remember something about William Atherton and like something with coconuts. Yes. What? Okay, William Atherton was actually he was in Die Hard. Right. He played the the slimy reporter. Who, <laughs> yeah, tries to exploit uh, John McClane's family, and he plays guy like the villain, a villainous scientist in Biodome. And what's remind me what's with the coconuts? He he like, like makes like a bomb. Right, like grenades or something. Yeah, a contraption yeah. out of them. I forget how exactly, but. And he, like, his best friend is, like, this parrot, and then he, like, ends up eating the parrot. The parrot <laughs> keeps going, I'm God, I am God. And he goes, and then you see him eating it, and he's like, no, I'm God. <laughs> I'm not stupid. I'm lame. I this thought is it was your a, favorite movie. It's a really stupid movie. I, I, you gotta have a stupid movie as one of your favorites. Well, any movie with Pauly Shore is ridiculous. I know. <laughs> I love that, though. Yeah. I, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Then scratch that. Let's do one of the Adam Sandler movies. Okay. Just pick any of them. And I really like Adam Sandler. Big Daddy. Loved it. Yeah, that's Loved Big probably, Daddy. That might be his best movie, in my opinion. Oh my gosh, I love any movie with, um, what the heck's her name? On the worst. Oh, Leslie Mann? No, what's her name? Oh god. His girlfriend? What's the E.T. girl? Drew Barrymore. Oh yes, any movie with Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler I loved. They, I, they did two? I love love. I'm telling you, I'm sappy. They did three movies, right? They, yes, I think um, they did three. Yeah, yeah, three. Fifty First Dates. Um, no, no, no. Um, Wedding Singer. Wedding Singer. Oh, yeah, yeah, so good. Yeah, and then there's good. that recent one. Uh, Blended. Yes. I didn't see it. Was, I saw it. Is it good? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was good. It was very, it was very 51st Dates esque ish. I, I think Sandler, Without the 51st Dates. I think in the last 10 years or so, though, Sandler's kind of gone downhill. You know what? He did his thing. He's been, he was up. He helped yeah. everybody out. I think he's great, and I love the. I love him as a director and. He's a great uh, dramatic actor, too. An and actor, yes. Yeah, I think he's love. amazing. I love what he stands for. I love what he does. I love what he did for people. I think that's really impressive, and I hope one day I could do that for my people. Oh. Yeah, was, no, I, I, I think he's a genuinely awesome person. I never even met him, he's and I would prob- love to. I think he, and he's pretty much responsible for uh, Kevin James' career. Wow. For the most part. Yeah. Wow, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, they were both stand-up comedians. I think oh, what a shame for- about uh, Kevin Can Wait is canceled. Oh, was it? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, well, I saw that coming because, first of all, the person that played the wife has nothing on, what's her name? Leah Remy. Rem- Rem- yes. Rem- she should have been in there to begin with from the jump. They had great chemistry. I gotta say, I'm not surprised because I tried to give the show a chance. Because I like Kevin James. Now, what what is this, this? It's not connected to King of Queens at all, right? It's not like connected at all. Separate, separate CBS show. But they still should have done a whole other startup together because they were just so good. They actually ended up bringing her in, right, trying right. to save the show. Right. And because I, the, whoever played the wife was just. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't like the bad. But it doesn't make sense. If Leah Remini shows up, shouldn't she have made it better? Yeah, but I think it was too, too late. late. It was too, too late, late in the oh. season. It was over, and it's a shame because Christopher Roach just got into that and Christopher Roach is a comedian here on Long Island I actually okay. got the pleasure of meeting and interviewing him uh, he's amazing great guy 
He's a gentle giant. I uh, <laughs> love him. He actually petted me. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, he's awesome. But he was in the show as well. Okay. Um, and you, I forget who he played. I didn't follow the show, but I, I know that that's was working for him, and I hope that he gets more jobs from it. Okay. It's a shame it was canceled, but I know why. It just, it was, it was whoever that wife was. She yeah. had to go. I'm oh, sorry. Wow. I can openly say that, and anybody who watches is gonna admit it. I'm sorry, lady. <laughs> It's not, not her fault. Yeah, I guess she did her best. It wasn't, right, I'm sure she did her best, and it just wasn't the part for her. I, th I believe there's a part for everyone, everyone can act, if, yeah. if they're given the chance to do it and do it right. Um, that was not for her. Right. And it's a shame, because I was like, wow, Chris Roach got a part, and this is huge. I think they'll come up with another Kevin James vehicle. Oh, yeah, well, Kevin James is not done. No. He is never going to be done. I think he's amazing. He's got a lot of energy. He's Amazing. Yeah. He, he carried the show, you know what I mean, for what it was worth. And uh, what a shame about that first wife. I just think yeah. their chemistry was off. So <laughs> yeah. noticeably poor. <laughs> okay. Well. Aw. Yeah. But I love Kevin James and I love Christopher yeah. Roach. Yeah. Yay. Chris, you're a big Christopher Roach. I never even heard of the guy. He's the man. Is Christopher he good? Roach. Nice. Christopher Roach. He's from <laughs> Hong Kong. Come on. Nice. All right. <laughs> so speaking of TV. Um, yes. Some favorite shows other than Game of Thrones? Favorite shows other than Game of Thrones? Yes. Could I liked dramatic, Black Mirror. Dra dramatic, comedic. Black Mirror Black was Mirror. good. Is that like, that's like a horror anthology? Yeah, it was so weird. It was like a, very weird. I've heard from a few people that I should see that show. Yeah. Strange, but good. Yeah. You know what I liked? Um, I think it was British, and it was called End of the Fucking World. They only had one season right now on Netflix. It was really good. It was really done well. There was a Steve Carell movie similar to that. Making a friend for the end of the world or something. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it was cute. Yeah, I like that. But this is like a dramatic series. This is a is a it's a one season series and it's uh, I guess it's like it's about a guy that he really is fascinated and wants to kill somebody and he finds this girl. They're like high school age. Okay. I guess or middle school, and uh, he's like, this is the girl I want to kill, but he ends up falling in love with her. Uh, but anyway, you have to watch it. It's really good. Love page. But, I, but we don't know if he's going to kill her yet. Uh -huh. It's a very interesting interesting story, and I like that it has some graphic stuff in it, and uh, it, it gets very personal, especially in a women's aspect, but it's a good movie for both male and female. I've talked about it with a lot of people, hmm. and uh, I liked it a lot. And the title again? End of the fucking world. End of, oh, end of the... It's the they really curse them? Yeah, oh, yeah. Or is it just... Well, it says F star 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 uh -huh. ing mm -hmm. world, but it's end of the fucking world. Nice. And uh, it's on Netflix. Perfect. It's a Netflix series. I might check that it out. It might still be on there. I think I watched this like a few months ago, so yeah. I don't know. But um, it's really good if you get a chance to see it. Okay. It only has one season right now. Nice. Are you big on Netflix? Do you like their selection? I like Netflix. Yeah, I like Netflix. Um, I haven't really browsed Netflix in a while because I use something different now. But okay. um, I'm not going to tell you what I use. But, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know, I'm the worst. Some things I talk about. Uh, but um, I really it's do. It's like you have so many secrets. I know. I'm very <laughs> mysterious. Yes. <laughs> but um, you know, sometimes less is more. <laughs> but um, I like to intrigue, nice. and I like I like um, implied stuff. I like to give people food for thought. Interesting. Yes. Do you use that tactic in in your scripts? I do. Nice. I do. Nice. I like a lot of implied stuff. Huh. Because it makes you kind of take on a different view as well and okay. make you think exactly. Right. That's that keeps the you know, audience guessing. Yes. Like, what's gonna happen? Right, right. Are her methods, are her motivations what I think they are? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So what is this girl <laughs> thinking? <in her> head? <laughs> nice. So did we cover what else we want to see in theaters? <laughs> oh, uh, no. I don't know. Oh, you don't know? I don't know. There's a lot. Oh, I saw the tr uh, teaser trailer for Dumbo, live action. <gasps> oh, yes. I saw it, too. Was oh, my it? gosh. It was good. So cute. And I love Dumbo growing great, up. Great, great movie. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I want to see it. It's so cute. So, basically, Tim Burton has taken Disney's Dumbo and made it live action. I love everything Tim Burton does. It, ooh, well, I wouldn't go that far. I Why, what, did, what, did, what didn't you like? Dark Shadows pretty much sucked. And it's a vampire movie, ooh. so. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> Actually, I agree. But I but I love sucked. Tim Burton. I love I, no, I love him, too. And, and I'm yeah. not into vampires. No. Not really. I think his last good movie was in 2003, Big Fish. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, Ian McGregor. Damn it. I didn't see that one. It really is. I didn't see it. Yeah. Big Fish. And Sweeney Todd. I'll get it tonight. But yeah. Yes, great. He's done some awful movies, but he's done some great movies too. Um, and speaking of which, actually, 
couple weeks ago, I went to the Beetle House in the city. I've been meaning to check it out. How is it? So cool. Is it, it cool? It's a little cramped, but the, the drinks are good. I feel like it's going to be like a Jekyll and Hyde Club situation where you go one time, it was good, and then you go back the second time, it sucks. Mm. So I can't wait to go. I'm going to go. No, I'm going to go back. Go back and tell yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. It'll be fun. Because yeah. you know what I mean? I, themed things only work so, so long for me until yeah. it becomes yeah, the same. Like boring. <laughs> But I, but I like, I love Jekyll and Hyde Club. If you've never been, go once. You'll love it. Mm -hmm. It's similar, right? Yeah. I, I would imagine. I think it's like a Halloween theme. Yeah. Right, right, right. They play Danny Elfman's music. Awesome. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think uh, Beetle House it's called. Beetle House, I think yeah. that would be really cool. I heard really good things, too, as well. And we just did drinks. We didn't do dinner, but the food menu was pretty great, I too. Wanna, I, I have to do food if I yeah. go. I'm, I, I'm really a big foodie, and I like trying new restaurants. Mm. As a matter of fact, there was one year where every single weekend I would try out, like, two to three new restaurants here on the island. So I think I've been like everywhere. Cool. I used to do that, now I don't do it so much anymore. But right, when I do yeah. go out, I try to do a new place. That's as good. much as I can. Yeah, I love I love going out to a lot of places in the city. Like, what, what would you say is your favorite food? Oh my gosh, I'll eat anything. Yeah. I have no allergies. You don't have a favorite, like? I love, uh, I love steak and I love okay. rice and I love I love Japanese food. I love, nice. I, honestly, I love everything. I, I this. <laughs> A good steak. I want food right now. Yeah, yeah, me too. Like I'm thinking about what I'm gonna uh, eat next. Of course. You know. I think about what I want to eat while I'm eating, like what I want to have next. While I'm, I'm like eating. drooling right now. <laughs> yeah. like, but oh if you gosh. like steak, um, in Bayside, Queens, Uncle Jack's. It's a Uncle Jack's seafood rest. Uh, they got Uncle like Jack's. They've got steak and seafood. You can do surf and turf. I feel like I've heard of Uncle Jack's. Yeah, it's it's upscale. Yeah, it's um, it's good though. <laughs> oh my god, I love food. Yeah. Would I you, really I could go for like a nice burger right now. I should just do movies and food. Yeah. <laughs> we should eat food yeah. while we're, yes. We should you know, eat food while we're doing you know. it. I love it. That's I a good love idea. it. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, the most important thing on a movie set is the food. Yeah, craft services. Yeah, yeah. it's really important. I can't tell you how many times I've walked onto a set and they had like two candy bars and like a power bar and like two water bottles. Oh, God. I'm like, what is this? I was an extra on a sh on a on Billions, the Paul Giamatti show. Oh, I like that. I did one job, and they had they just gave a, you pizza. A, a table of like chips and cold and warm soda. And like the coffee is cold. There wasn't even coffee. If, the, if there's coffee left, oh, there's yeah. not even coffee. Yeah. Did they give you pizza? No. <gasps> just like chips and snacks. And I was on a movie set once where they ran out of pizza, and the oh. producer came over and gave me her slice. Oh, oh that's nice. <laughs> Isn't that cute? But I was like, no, you take it. She's like, no, you have it. And I was like, okay. Uh. <laughs> All right, well, as <laughs> <insist> I tried. <laughs> I was starving. But it, it was interesting. Um, I, who runs out of food? Come on. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible thing to uh, do on a movie set. And now speaking of food... Um, Today is, is Father's Day. Yes, Happy Father's Day yeah. to all you fathers yeah, out there. Yeah, Happy Father's happy Day. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What, are you. Do you have any plans tonight? I um, don't. No dinner? No dinner. Okay. No plans for Father's Day. Okay. I'm actually going to sing karaoke later. <laughs> happy <laughs> nice. Father's Day, Dad. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We don't really do the Father's Day, Mother's Day thing in our house. Mm -hmm. We really don't. It's, uh, you know why? We just don't think you should be, you should be celebrating your parents every, every day. day. I mean, if you're, you have yeah. to narrow it down to a day to do something nice for your parents, which a lot of people use as a cop out, by the way, they shit on their parents all year and then they're like, hi, yep, I got yep. you this broken <laughs> junk from the fucking Yeah, you get to be trinket. a hero one day. Here's a trinket that says, number one dad, I'm going to shit on you tomorrow though, you oh, know? Wow. No, no, I'm just kidding. No. I'm sure everyone loves their parents, but you know, you should be nice to your family all the time if you mm -hmm. can, and you should, you know. Yeah. Celebrate them all the time. I don't know why we're <laughs> narrowed down to a day. I hate Silly. That it's cliche. It's yeah. Hallmark. Sorry, guys. And I'm a, not a Jehovah. <laughs> <laughs> are you a big? Are you big on family then? Yeah, I'd say. I say I have a small family. Um, mm. In the last two years, my family grew. Mm. Um, I have two nephews now, and I'm about to have either a niece or a nephew on the way. So, and nice. two two marriages have happened. Mm. And uh, so I have a lot of family now. So it's it's in the last like. Three-ish years, nice. yeah. actually two, three years, yeah. So it's grown a lot, a lot, and mm -hmm. I and uh, otherwise it was just like the five of us. It was never anything else. I don't have really cousins or anything like that. I don't have any cousins. Yeah. How uh, weird was that? that? No cousins at all. No cousins. I that, think I have second cousins, but they're like older and they like live wherever. I've never really. Okay. I think I met them once when I was like three. <laughs> I was like, uh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know them. And they're older. I have older family. Like, my parents are both in their 70s. Okay. So I have older family. You know, my grand I have one grandma. She's 91. 
No. And uh, I never met my second set of grandparents. They were dead, both dead before I was born. So I've, you know, that's it. Grandma. Grandma. <laughs> I love you, Grandma. Oh, 91. Grandma. 91. <laughs> 91. Congratulations. Years young. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day, Grandma. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. <laughs> so uh, we have a few minutes. Yeah. Um, is there anything you want to plug? Anything at all? Sure. I'm Sarah Martin. I'm a filmmaker here on Long Island. I make horror films for a living. You can follow my stuff at silentenvyproductions.com. I just finished my second feature film, Menagerie. Uh, it's about a real life serial killer that murders prostitutes and cuts out their eyes. It's very romantic. I remember that. How can you forget that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very romantic. <laughs> not romantic at all. Um, I Wait, what's the name that. of that one again? Menagerie. Men okay. And then my first uh, feature, which will be available soon for purchase and online, uh, is called Nefarious. And that is about two families coming together in the most horrifying way. Avery's Angry stars in both of them. And uh, it's pretty interesting. And I can't wait to share it with you guys. So. Yeah. All right. Awesome. That's it, and I'm Sarah Martin. That's Sarah it. Martin, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is awesome. You'll yeah. come back again soon? I would love to come back again. Yes, awesome. And maybe we can have uh, our other guest, Kendrick. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Kendrick, if you're out there, <laughs> this one's for you. Yeah. This one's for all my friends who couldn't make it today. Right, right. We want Kendrick, you. Kendrick, we need your review. We need you here in the studio. We need soon. you, like Uncle Sam. Yes. We need your money. <laughs> all right. Cool. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> well, thanks again. And I want to thank everyone watching today. This has been a great uh, edition of Under the Radar. And I want to thank all the dads out there and stepdads. Uh, happy Father's Day. Jim, happy Father's happy Day. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week.